came from Agdam in 1993. Do you remember leaving Nagorno-Karabakh? Does anybody here remember Nagorno-Karabakh? Nobody does. Everybody's grown up here right. in these railway carriages. The younger generation might not remember life in Karabakh, but memories of the war are everywhere in Azerbaijan. We just spotted these signs on the hillside over here. On the left, it says, remember Karabakh. And on the right, I will give my life for the motherland. So no one's going to forget about Nagorno-Karabakh around here. Everyone we met in Azerbaijan talked about Karabakh. We'd been invited to meet Egan Kasimova, Azerbaijan's number one pop star. She regularly sings about Karabakh. Salam alaikum. Nice to meet you. How are you? Very well, thank you. How are you? Fine, thank you. And we've come to watch your, your we've come to watch you singing. Uh, my English very, very bad. Ah. Yeah. Well, my Azeri much worse. <laughs> ah. <laughs> what what will you be doing today? Then uh, we are recording my song called Vatan Motherland, and they're filming me. It's, it's, it's combat equipment that you're wearing, and you've got bullets here. I can shoot with an AK-47 and rather well. Mm -hmm. so. I fought in Zangilan and Gubatli for a month in 1993. So you actually fought in the Karabakh War? Yes. So I think we're going to be allowed to stay in here while she sings. <laughs> I hope she's not going to ask me for a duet. Virane gala biler yurt sarayı Ahından bir seda göğe ucalır Veten dardadır o kömeye çağırır Milyonlar ses ver Ermenim sesime Bir garış torpak vermeli keçkime İkidler yurdu adını daşıyar How have your experiences affected your singing and the songs that you sing? Every time I sing, I close my eyes and all I can imagine is Karabakh. We are facing this horrible problem. Every time singers like me sing songs, all we can think of is Karabakh. Karabakh stands in front of our eyes. That's all we can think of. Azerbaijan's border with breakaway Nagorno-Karabakh is closed, so to get there we had to take a huge detour. We drove over the mountains into neighbouring Georgia and on into Armenia. It's a little bit chilly out there. Armenia supports Karabakh, and it's the only country from which you can enter the breakaway state. Eventually we got through and met our Karabakh guide, David. Oh. We've been traveling quite a while, but now we've got to the crucial point. David, what does this say? Free Artsakh welcomes you. And that means exactly what? Exactly that uh, Artsakh is Nagorno Armenian name for Karabakh, and Free Artsakh welcomes you. We're in Nagorno Karabakh? Yeah, that's right. The capital of Karabakh is the small town of Stepanakert. During Soviet communist times, it was a provincial Azeri town under Muslim control. Now the only people here are Christian Karabakhians with ties to Armenia. Although the Christians won the most recent conflict, they feel they've suffered in the past. Armenians accuse their Muslim neighbors of killing millions of them in recent centuries. It means Armenians and the people of Karabakh fear new conflict. And even students at the local university must be prepared.
I'm not going to attack anybody. I'm just preparing myself to defend my motherland. Did you lose any relatives during the conflict? No. My cousin. Was he fighting or was he defending or was he just a, a civilian? He was a civilian. This is no boot camp. These are teachers who are training to pass on the techniques of war to a younger generation. At school, all pupils must have military training for three years. And we have to train the teachers who run the course. This is the main market in Stepanaka. We're going to see if we can get any souvenirs. We'll just see what's on sale. Because Karabakh cannot trade with Azerbaijan, most of the goods have to come over the mountains from the Armenian capital, Yerevan. Where are these ones from? From Yerevan. So they've come over the mountains as well. So this is a traditional Karabakh dish. What's in this, the bread here, David? More than 30, 35 types of herb. This is Armenian money. This is a thousand, which is roughly a pound. So I'm going to pay 200 for our piece of bread here, our herb bread. Mm. Mm. Very tasty. During the war, Stepanaka saw heavy fighting when it was besieged by the Azerbaijan army. So the Azeris had their guns up here. They had their guns, they have special type of machine, uh, car which, uh, you know, launched missiles. And actually, you know that it's like on palm of your hand, so you can even target uh, individual houses, individual, you know, streets. Uh, there were even snipers who could shoot nearby houses. Over there is my home. What was it like for you? Were you coming under constant bombardment? Well, it, it was terrible. Uh, for example, in uh, our uh, building, uh, around 14 missiles hit our building. Hey, just uh, yeah, your building? Just my building. The Azeri stronghold of Shushe bore the brunt of the Armenian counterattack. The Azeris fled when the city fell, and much of it now lies in ruins. During the war, every building, every single building was a kind of fortress. And 